In this problem, I need to graph the following rational function. Here it is. And in order to make that easier, we need to find the asymptotes, holes, x and y intercepts. Once we have that information, the graphing part is fairly easy. The first thing you need to do with any rational function is make sure it is factored so you can see if there are any holes. So the denominator is totally factored. I'm going to have to quickly work on my numerator. So my denominator I know is x minus 2. And there's many different ways of factoring. I'm just going to do this one by trial and error since the numbers are fairly small. Two numbers that multiply to 2x squared. Well, I'm going to have a 2x and an x. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 3. So I need a 1 and a 3. One's going to be, one of them is going to be positive, one's going to be negative. And after a little trial and error, I think you can see I need the 3 here and the 1 here. This needs to be negative and that needs to be positive. So when I foil it out, 2x squared plus 2x minus 3x is negative x and minus 3. So the reason we did this was to see if anything reduced. Well, nothing reduces, therefore I know on this problem that I have no holes in the graph. Okay, so that's the first thing. We've taken care of the holes. Now we need to look at asymptotes. So the first type of asymptote we always look at is vertical asymptote. And for abbreviation, I'm just going to write VA for vertical asymptote. Remember, we find that by setting the denominator equal to 0. So I get x minus 2 equals 0. So what's the equation of my vertical asymptote? x equals 2. Oops. Now we need to look at horizontal and slant asymptotes. And those all depend on the degree of the numerator and the denominator. So I really didn't leave myself enough room, but let's see. What is the degree of my numerator? I think you can see it's degree 2. What is the degree of the denominator? The degree is 1. Well, we get horizontal asymptotes when the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Not true in this case. And we also get horizontal asymptotes when the degrees are equal. Not true in this case again. Therefore, we know at this point there are no horizontal asymptotes. And we have to decide, is there a slant asymptote? Well, remember, a slant asymptote is when the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. So is that the case here? So is the degree of the numerator equal to one more than the degree of the denominator? Just have to put an abbreviation there. That's the question in this case. Well, the degree of the numerator is 2. Is 2 equal to 1 plus the degree of the denominator? Yes, that is true. Therefore, we know in this case we have a slant asymptote. And the way we find the slant asymptote is we do this actual division. Now notice I'm dividing by x minus 2. It's linear of the form x plus a number or x minus a number. Therefore, I can use synthetic division. So remember, when x minus 2 equals 0, we get x equals 2. So 2 is the number we put in the little box for synthetic division. Remember, the number that goes in this box is always opposite of this number. Now I need to strip off my coefficients. I have a 2, negative 1, negative 3. 2, negative 1, negative 3. And now let's do synthetic division. 
we bring down this 2 and then we multiply this 2 by this 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Write the answer here. Add these two numbers up. 4 minus 1 is 3. Now let's repeat. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Now remember, 3 is the remainder. To find the slant asymptote, we're not interested in the remainder. We're interested in the quotient. Since I started out with a degree 2 in the numerator, my, so this term here was an x squared. This is always 1 less. So my quotient is going to be 2x plus 3, and that is the equation of my slant asymptote y equals 2x plus 3. I've summarized all the information I found on the previous slide, and now all we have to do are find x and y intercepts. So let's start out with the x-intercepts first, and how do we find them? You set y equal to 0, that means set f of x equal to 0. So we've already factored it, so I'm going to use my factored form. So here's f of x, and it equals 0. So when does a fraction equal 0? When the numerator equals 0. So we're going to set the numerator equal to 0. So I'm going to get two x-intercepts. The first one, when 2x minus 3 equals 0, or 2x equals 3, dividing both sides by 2, I get the point 3 halves 0. Or if I have to graph that, I'm going to graph 1.5, 0. The other one is when x plus 1 equals 0 or when x equals negative 1, so that's going to give me the point negative 1, 0. So here are my two x-intercepts, and the last thing I need to find is the y-intercept. We do that by setting x equal to 0, and I think I'm going to use this version of f of x. It'll be a little bit easier. So f of x equals... 2 times 0 squared minus 0 minus 3 over 0 minus 2. So I think you can see why I did that, because these two terms go to 0 and this one's 0. So I'm going to get negative 3 over negative 2, which is 3 halves. So that is the point 0, and since I'm going to graph it, 1.5. So I found all of my intercepts now. So now we just need to graph everything. So let's start out with my vertical asymptote of x equals 2. So this isn't going to look very pretty, but it's about the best I can do. So there is my vertical asymptote x equals 2. Now I'm going to have to work on my slant asymptote here. So to be able to graph this, this is a line, and what is my slope? m is 2, I'm going to write it as a fraction, because that's going to be my rise over my run. And what is my y-intercept? It's going to be 0, 3. This is for my asymptote, not for the graph, but for the asymptote. So I'm going to start at the point 0, 3, so it's on the y-axis, up 3, which is right here. And then I have to go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. And this is going to be hard to do. Let's see if I can get it on here. And down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1. And now I'm going to try and draw a dotted line roughly through those points. As I said, it doesn't look very pretty on this pad. And there I have my slant asymptote. So now I need to plot my x and my y intercepts. 
So let's start with the x-intercepts. And the first one is at 1.50. So I'm going to go 1.5 to the right, which is about there. So there's 1.50. Then negative one zero, so I'm going to start at the origin, go one to the left. So there's my next one right there. And my y-intercept is zero, 1.5. So on the y-axis, go up 1.5, and that's about the best I can do here. Sorry about the bad graphing. And so I think now we have enough points in that region that we can see that the graph is going to start down here, come up, go through that, those points, and curve back down. We don't know where it's going to turn around. We learned that in calculus. So let's just sketch in what we think this graph is going to look like. Let me turn my pen on. And so it's going to come up and go back down. So that is roughly what my graph looks like there. And now we've got to figure out what happens to the right of this vertical asymptote. We know what happens on the left. My graph is down here. We've got to figure out what happens over here. We know the graph can't cross the x-axis anywhere in this region because we've plotted the only two x-intercepts. So it doesn't look like it sh could do this. So it's most probably going to be in this region. And to confirm that, all we have to do is pick a point where x is 3 or 4, some number like that. So let's just pick when x is 3 and figure out what our function value would be. So what would be f of 3? And it doesn't matter whether I use the um, factored or non-factored form. I'm just going to use factored form. So it's 2 times 3 minus 3 over 3 plus 1. I mean times 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 2. So 2 times 3 is 6 minus 3 is 3. And then I have 3 plus 1 is 4, so 3 times 4 over 3 minus 2 is 1. So it's going to be 12. So my last point is 3, 12. So let's graph that point. When x is 3, y is 12. So I think it's right here. Is that where we thought it was going to be? Yes. So my graph is going to approach the vertical asymptote here, come down, turn around some when I'm not sure when, and approach my slant asymptote up in the top right. So there is my graph, the two pieces of my graph. I have one down here and one up in this region.